Hey, welcome back. Another day, another vlog. Good to have you back. Look, my apologies, Friday, I no show Friday, I was a no show. Um, I do have a good, well, it's not a good excuse, I guess, but yeah, I was just trashed by the end of the day. Um, I was down, I rode into the train station, traveled all the way down to Fremantle. About an hour drive or hour train ride down to where I was going in Frio, and I shot all day there, and then had to do a couple of little errands on the way back. So by the time I got back and picked up little Jack from school, got home, got all that sort of six thirty-seven, and then dinner. And yeah, sorry, I just hadn't even got anything sorted. I had, obviously, I'd missed all the news for the day, so. It was either going to be stay up late and put one out late or just have the night off. And I was I just honestly was just trash. So I just said, no, nah, I'll instead of rushing it and doing a poor job, I thought I'll just leave it till Monday. Come back Monday, it'll give me a few more options to look at too. As it has been a little bit slow this week for tech stuff um, and news. So I thought it's a good chance just to back off and just have a day. Very rare I miss them. I know I only do the Monday to Fridays and I always, I've been regular ever since I started for that. So yes, my apologies, humblest apologies to you all, especially podcasters, um, probably wanting to listen to something on their way home after work. That's probably worse, <laughs> the worst thing of not having something to listen to. So yeah, look, uh, yeah, not much I can do about it. It was good. I did have a good day shooting. Um... On Friday, I sort of was hoping it was going to be really wet. Uh, it was forecast to be rain and that. It was a little bit of wind down there. It wasn't the water I'd hoped it'd come through. I was sort of looking, you know, that nice wet look of the when you get buildings and concrete and, and stone gets that wet look. That's what I was sort of after, something along those lines. And then also I wanted a heap, trying to see if I get some puddles and nice puddles where I could get reflections and stuff. Had all my wet weather gear with me, so it made it even heavier to carry around. Um, and yeah, just well, I'm not sure until I get a look at the photos. I haven't really had a, I haven't had a good look at them. I just had a brief glance. There's some there. Um, it's it's probably not my forte that the landscape. Or, or sorry, that architectural type stuff. I have done that city, the Perth city one. If you haven't seen that, go check out that video. That's pretty cool. There's a lot more there. Free, I thought there'd be a lot more historical stuff. There was some funky stuff, and I did try to get around, and I don't know the area that well, so it was probably more of a scouting trip to see what is there. Again, I think it just lacked that atmosphere. Had some nice nice dark clouds, but um, not really menacing dark clouds or anything like that, which would help accentuate anything. It just, yeah... Just lacked that little something, I thought, and I'd sort of had that feeling everywhere I went to shoot. It was like, yeah, that's nice, but it's like, yeah, just sort of thought. So you'll see it when the video comes out. Um, wasn't as like all, all best played plans. You try and do the best you can. Uh, you're not going to win every time, uh, unfortunately, and I think that was pretty much one of those days that's put down to a learning experience. It's... Um, a lot of time invested and a lot of travel and money to put into it. I think it was like 13 bucks for the train ticket just to return. So, uh, and then a couple of hours of travel and riding around and up some serious hills there. I can definitely tell you that for the BMX. <laughs> but look, there's some really nice spots and I had a good day. And so that wasn't too bad. It wasn't a total loss. It was good. As I've, I've said it many times, as long as you're getting out and shooting, that's probably more important than actually just like, ah, oh, no, it's crap, I'm not going to go. You're better off going and having a bad day than not going and then regretting it because you didn't get a photo. Because you never know what you might find. I've, as you know many times with the channel, my, my second uh, image or my second or third composition is probably my better composition. So I'm, uh, I definitely have no qualms with just going and having a crack and just seeing what I get and then go from there. So we'll see how it goes. It yeah, wasn't ideal. I would have liked a bit more rain. It just hasn't, it's sort of, get, we're getting little bits of drizzle, but not that heavy rain with like decent rain where that water floods the streets and everything's wet and saturated, that, that lovely wet look. Um, so yeah, 
we'll see what happens. On the flip side, that did the premiere on Friday night at nine o'clock for the Trig Beach video, and that came up really good. That was just a. Uh, Again, trying to just slot in a spot where I could get out and go shoot because I'd just um, been a dad and a mum, uh, being a dad and working away. I only get one week at home, so I've got to try and fit everything in in that week. Um, so for me to just to, I can't really just go when I want. I've got to try and fit it into the family schedule. And this is one afternoon where when it's normally Jack's uh, share of dinner bedtime. I just I had a chance where I, I got out and went and did a shoot and got a sunset. I sort of play, looked at the weather, it should have been all right. I was hoping for some high level clouds. I, I didn't get those where that where that sun gets down to the horizon and then you got the clouds up high so that it bounces back off and you get that really orange clouds. I didn't get that, but what I did find was some amazing rock formations and moss um, right on the water's edge, just glowing green. It was just insane. You'll, if you haven't seen some of the photos on Instagram, I've already put the best couple, I think, up so far that I really, really was stoked about. And I got a got a heap of really, really nice shots. So absolutely wrapped with that. Um, I ran around like a blue ass fly. I think that was on my last perf shoot with my 1DS, which has now moved on. Um, so I'm looking at other cameras. So we're trying to work out what we're going to be doing. I've got a I'm just waiting for a lens coming for my iPhone. So I'm going to try and start using that a bit more for video The and use the iPhone as the video unit. I can shoot 4K in it uh, using the Moment app and I can run anamorphic on it. So I want to try and do a bit more of that stuff. And then just use the M50 as purely as the photos instead of the camera. So I've got to suss that out and I've got some other stuff we'll talk about tonight or to today with the M50 and what the future it holds. So look, Trig Beach, definitely a couple of, uh, or at least one, maybe two portfolio shots in there for me. So I'm super, super stoked about that. That's a massive win. Uh, it was a gorgeous evening. Um, yeah, gorgeous spot. Pretty much everything spot the dog. The only thing was the old uh, Vixia just wasn't good for low light. It's, um, it does a good job in the daytime, but it's just no good with low light. Um, it did okay, like you can still see me, but it just wasn't as up to what I need to, so you can sort of see what I'm doing and, and go through the controls and bits and pieces. So I'm still in that process of working out how to do it um, without the expense of having to buy a new, another camera, but I have been saving my pennies. And uh, again, we'll talk about, we've got some good news coming up about what could be happening shortly. So let's get into that news. Now, speaking of Canon, the RF, 85 mil that um, f2 image stabilized stm lens which was released in july i think with the r5 and r6 hasn't been in shops as such uh, good news is it should be arriving uh, this week uh, i did see when i did a bit of background checks to today that it looks like some of the shops in australia were actually selling it and putting orders through and releasing it. So looks like that's finally come available. That's going to be an amazing portrait lens. If you're into portrait photography, that 85 gives you that really good good compression and great for headshots and stuff like that. So definitely pretty cool. Um, and that'll be a great lens, I think, for the RF. Stabilized makes it so much easier for hand holding when you're doing portrait photography and stuff like that. So definitely a good lens. So if you have been waiting for that to get released, shouldn't be this week that the stock starts rolling through. So that's great news. Uh, Google has got a new little feature on, it's called Hold For Me. Um, basically it'll do your, just seeing out Google, if you've got a Google device, it'll say Google Hold For Me. And if you go on hold when you're talking to Telstra, which is pretty standard for 25, 30 minutes, you'll be sitting there waiting and you don't know what to do. You try to do stuff and walk around with your phone on speaker, looking like a dickhead and waiting for the, some deadbeat in Telstra in India or China or wherever they put their call center to save money uh, to not give you any help as well. <laughs> um, this will do it for you. So this will automatically hold It'll then wait till when they pick up. It'll basically divert it, send you a message back to pick up to notify you that you're ready to go again. So you can just go on with your life 
and as per normal and this will do it. So that's pretty cool and a little bit of payback for all those companies that uh, like those 20, 30 minute hold holding patterns, which are a pain in the butt most of the time. So that's pretty cool. So good, another good little trick from Google. Uh, Subway copped some heat this week or over the weekend. Uh, they've found out that the bread or in our Ireland, the courts, they come up against the courts because they were trying to reduce the taxes against a sandwich because it's a sandwich is, I guess, deemed um, necessary food or whatever. So there's some 10% tax, I guess, like the GST, goods and service tax, some of our necessary items in Australia like milk and um, tampons and bread and stuff like that are all GST3 because they're a requirement to sort of live, I guess. It's, it's pretty standard stuff. So same thing, uh, they were trying to push it through as a sandwich. Uh, unfortunately, it did sort of hit a bit of a backflip because they basically the judge said that Subway bread is not bread. <laughs> Anything, the, the prescribed limit that... Uh, deems it to be not bread or deems it as a cake. Basically, that's what it basically got deemed as, a cake, so it's not essential, so they have to pay that extra money. And they did the results, got the results back, and there's 10% sugar in your bread, in all the breads from Subway. Don't matter what you get, it's 10% sugar. So if you're wondering why that Subway sandwich always tastes a little bit nicer than uh, the rest and the bread, which I've always enjoyed. I always get that Italian herbs and cheese. It, it tastes really good. Um, well, that's probably not going to be part. That's going to be part of the reason I think is it's because it's loaded full of sugar. So yeah, check that one out. If you are trying to avoid sugar as much as you can, uh, Subway probably isn't the best bet for you. <laughs> Maybe just get one of those flat flat rolls when you go. At least then you just get a little bit, should be a little bit better for you. Um, now, uh, we'll go into the Canon stuff. The big news, Canon, some M50 specs have dropped. <clears throat> Again, this is just rumored specs, not 100%, but they're coming from Canon rumors, and they're generally pretty darn good and pretty close to the mark in everything that I've seen in the last couple of years. So it should be like a fairly, fairly... Uh, round the mark sort of a good idea of what they're looking at and what we're going to be getting. Now, uh, 32 mega, 32 and a half megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor. So that's, I'm pretty sure that's the same one as the M6 Series 2. So that's a apparently a really good sensor. So that's pretty darn cool. It's going to get the Digic S processor. A new, or a newer version of that. So that's the current one now, the Digic X or Digic 10. Um, so we could be looking at that or a newer version, maybe the Digic 11. Dual Pixel Autofocus 2, that's really good. That's the one that is in the R5 and R6. So you've got the really good Spot the Dog Eye and Animal and stuff like that. So I'm hopeful that's going to be pretty close to mark. 14 frames a second shooting, which is, yeah, that's pretty awesome for a little mirror, tiny little mirrorless camera. The big one, huge one, which everyone will be excited about, 4K 60 frames per second, no crop. Awesome. That is massive, massive deal. Um, I've got this in 4K now, but I have got to get this from where I am. I'm about six feet away from the camera or five feet away from the camera to get that in 4K with that crop. I've had to go to my 10 mil uh EFS lens, it's the only way I can do it. So that's basically takes it out to a 15, 15 mil, and that's just so I can fit me in for that headshot sort of thing. So, and I've had to pump in the heat, because this lens does is pretty terrible for light, I've had to pump in a heap of light, and I'm hopeful it's clear enough for you. So, but that's the sort of advantage with that 4K 60 crop, I'll be able to have that same, I can use my Sigma 16 lens and I've only got a small bit of space here before the car that I can use. So that 16, I could be able to whack that on and get that same image with better light, better quality and all that stuff. So that's awesome news for the M50. Very, very cool. No Ibis. Uh, I, I'm sort of thinking that's a, they've copped a lot of heat because of the Ibis and the R5 and R6 has been really bad for video and stuff. I haven't heard about the Ibis how it's worked for photography. 
Now, and the, and that's where you, the hardest part with these hybrid cameras is you've, you've got you've got to appease the video camera guys, and then you've got to appease the photography guys. Now, Ibis realistically. I think everyone in the video thought, well, we're going to have Ibis, it's going to be amazing, we're not going to need a gimbal, I can just carry this camera around and get amazing video. I don't think that's ever going to be true. I just, I'd just, i like to think maybe down the track it could be, but I don't think it has. I think the Canon and the, well, the probably the best of that is the Olympus, and it's the only one that's close enough to even consider that. Uh, if some one of these smart people at Canon and Sony had a bought Olympus when they had a chance uh, before the Japanese company did. Well, then they would have been able to get that technology. And I think just having that their stabilization technology in a Canon or a Sony would have been worth the cost of buying Olympus just for that technology alone. That you, I, you can't beat that for tech, their stabilization, it's just insane. And I think then you've got the photography side where that IBIS is going to be great for handheld shooting shooting birds, animals, all that stuff, which is what I think a lot of the uh, photography people buying these cameras are going to be using them for. I think video-wise, camera sort of has been smashed a fair bit because that Sony A7RS3 or A7S3 is pretty much the duck's guts now. That's, that's, the, that's the top of the wazza. If you want to beat it, you've got to beat that. There's nothing else close to it for low-light performance. Uh, which is a massive thing with video cameras. Uh, doesn't matter how good your lens is. As soon as you get indoors and you're doing video or getting those those shots through trees and low light and and dynamic range, you need that low right low light facility to be able to do that sort of stuff. So video is a tricky one to appease, and the IBIS just didn't work for Canon, and it just got smashed a fair bit by that. So I'm wondering if that's why they haven't put it in. I haven't heard too much about too many complaints about the IBIS on the photography side, and I think that's probably what Canon was aiming the IBIS at. What the aim the IBIS was there for the photographers, probably not more so the videos. They're probably I think Canon realistically thought, well, yeah, we're going to have IBIS. It's going to be fantastic for handheld shooting and taking shots, and that's great. Uh, it, it's probably going to a little be a lot better for the video guys for to do it, but realistically, they still need to be using. A gimbal and turn it off if you want actual smooth video and I think that's sort of the way they looked at it uh, from what I've watched and how they've approached things and what they've done and I think that's a I think that's a fair estimate um, Sony's one of those freaks where they're they've got that a7 s uh, a7 sr a7 4 uh, <laughs> losing my mind uh, which is just an insane photography camera and now they've got this a7 s3 which is just an insane video camera so they've, even them, like the A7S3 is by nowhere near means or nowhere near means an amazing photography camera, but video, it's in, insane. So it, it's less of a hybrid and more of a video camera. And then you've got the R6 and R5, which are definitely hybrids, but they've, they've tried too hard to keep it a hybrid and in that fact, they've made it, they've hurt itself. I think that was that's where the problem is with those that sometimes you've got to pick which way you're going to go and, and it's great to have a hybrid camera but don't expect amazing things from it. Um, the M50 uh, does good, great photos, decent video, like it's a good all-round hybrid package at the right price. Uh, is it amazing at photography? No. Is it amazing at video? Definitely not. Uh, but... Overall, it's a good hybrid package. Uh, once you get into that sort of pro level or you're up in the ante, I think you really need to pick your hand, pick your poison. And um, if you want video, well, then you need to get a video centric, say a Panasonic or a Sony. Now, the Panasonic, the only problem they have is they have terrible focus. Uh, their contrast focus is just a total schmuzzle, and they just haven't realized that, and no one wants that. So that's no good for the video. Everything else video-wise is insane, awesome. So you need that, you need that mix. And then Olympus are, are, start, are now talking about possibly going, pushing more towards video and moving away from photography. Um, so it's it's a, it's a very tricky thing to sort of keep everyone happy when you play that hybrid game, uh, and it's going to be even trickier. But this M50, look, if it's got no ibis. I don't think it's gonna really hurt it. It's small enough that it's easy enough to whack on a gimbal if you want that smooth video. Um, 
If it's got digital stabilization in there, I've used that a fair bit from the photos and it's made a big difference. So I think that'll be pretty cool anyway, just for the photos. And I'm I'm on operating 90% of the time on a on a tripod, so stabilization really isn't a massive, massive issue for me. So but I think that isn't gonna hurt it as much as you might think. EVF, good news on the EVF though. Uh, it is a little tricky to see through these things when you are getting them and trying to pick out anything. They're gonna say it's, they're saying it's gonna be similar to the R6. So that's that should be a bit of a bump up for it and be a lot clearer for us old blind people. <laughs> uh, one SD slot, look, one SD slot. I, I think I've said before many times, I don't think this was ever gonna be a hardware fix. I think it's something they could fit into the existing body like a, the EVF, which is just a different screen uh, and different software and all these other things are all software processors, uh, sensor, that's all stuff inside the body. There's no physical changes. I think that's all it was ever gonna be, what they could do inside that body to keep that price down. And that's what they need to be. Any sort of bigger changes, so physical changes, that's going to go to that top of the line APS-C we keep hearing in the rumors about. That could have the twin card slot. What I wouldn't have minded on this is somehow being able to put SS, uh, connect an SSD up and go straight to that instead of an SD card. And all you need is that USB-C slot. So that is the one thing they do need for that top of the range one, that, that feature. That would be huge. Because uh, then you've only got an SD card as a backup, and then you can record everything straight to your SSD, which are portable, waterproof, shockproof, and all that stuff nowadays. Uh, that's definitely the way forward than epoxy SD cards. And they're pretty much close to the mark on price. Once you pay for, pay for a premium SD card, you might as well get a decent SSD. I can get a Samsung T7 or a, a WD or plenty of those other ones that are built tough as well. So the NAR box and stuff like that, there's heaps you could do. So look, I think the M50, now this is all, they're all rumored to be coming this quarter. So the next three months, it's just gonna be waiting to go. We're not far off hearing something about this. I don't know if we'll hear about the 50 and then get the next one. And that's gonna be the trickiest thing to me. Do I jump now into the M50 or do I wait? or until we hear about this APS-C one and see if that's gonna be the duck's nuts. See what happens. It might be a little bit more, how much more is it gonna be? Rightio, and then lucky, oh, lucky last? No, two, two more to go. I'll do a quick one first. So Apple, quick one, Apple iPhone, possible entry price, 649 US. So that'll be the mini. Uh, that's gonna come in under a lot of the competition in the Android world, so you're gonna, it's gonna be a, Good year to get a good deal on an iPhone, which is good. Everyone's had a bad year. I think it'd be nice for Apple just to uh, maybe take 80% of their profit instead of 100%, maybe give a little bit back to all their continued fanboys and supporters and people that have stuck with them for so many years and made them a $2 trillion company. It'd be nice to trim the profits for at least one year or one model and then maybe if they want it, they can put it back up the next one. But uh, I reckon that'd be a great way and a good way to get some other people into it. So six forty nine for that. That's that's going to be under a thousand dollars Australian for that mini uh, with all the new gear, all the new tech. So very very cool. And the last one, at least, Lenovo's just released a new X One ThinkPad. So portable ThinkPads. They're your ones you see everyone at work with. Those Lenovo's, the X Ones. They look like a square brick sort of style. They've come a long way. Uh, you can get the X1 Carbon. They've had that for a while. Great little uh, bits of gear. Well, this one's a new one, and this one's going to be super, super handy for people on the move, running around that don't want to carry an iPad and an and other thing like a portable pad or something like that and use that, but want to, still want a laptop but nice and light, especially if they're traveling in the plane and stuff like that. This could be a great option. Go check this out. It's uh, just released in the States, I believe. ThinkPad X1 Nano. Now, this is their lightest ever laptop. Total weight, 902 grams. Insane, absolutely crazy. That is basically, if you take an iPad Pro 12 inch uh, Pro with that magic keyboard, you put that together, that weighs a kilo more than this. That's how light this is. Just the iPad, it, the iPad's about 200 grams or 300 grams lighter than the whole laptop. 
but that's just an iPad. That's nothing. That's no pencil. There's no nothing else with it. So super, super mega light. Uh, still that build, great build quality. They've used fancy materials, carbon, and all sorts of different stuff in it to get it there. 17-hour battery. Very good for business people. 65 watt charger, USB-C, so super fast charging. Uh, it's a good size charger. You, you can get those mini ones now, so check that out. Comes doesn't have too much I/O on it, but it does have twin uh, two Thunderbolt fours on there. So that's going to give you super insane, your best you can get transfer speeds. Uh, you'll be able to run displays. You'll be able to run external GPUs if you want to get home and do some gaming. You need a bit more grunt. Uh, so that's awesome. Uh, one headphone jack as well as with that. Now it's 5G compatible, so you've got a slot for your SIM card, uh, so you can go full 5G on this, so that's awesome. And it's running the 11th gen i7 up to an i7 chip on it. Also running Intel uh, Iris X integrated graphics, so that's the latest and greatest, so that should be pretty good. There's been some really good reports about that and how it, uh, it's worked on a few different things, so that's not as bad as it might sound. Uh, 450 nits of brightness, I think, my 16 inch is about a five 600, so that's a pretty good, pretty good comparison for such a little tiny thing. Uh, 16 gigabyte max RAM, a terabyte, uh, a ter one terabyte SSD in there, Dolby Atmos, Wi-Fi 6, uh, and yeah, just insane, crazy. 1610, so it's a little bit taller than your normal one, so you lose a little bit width than your other screens, but still really, really good. Now, 13-inch laptop, uh, it's going to be base price of 1400 US, so that's roughly around two grand Australian, but look, I think it's going to it's going to be released in quarter four, so next three months we're going to hit, get the full release and price. This thing is pretty darn cool, super, super mega light. If you travel for business, you're constantly on the road, doing working with customers, getting in and out of the car, something you can pick up and not feel the weight of is going to be super important, super productive. Go check that out. I think it's going to be a great laptop. Very, very cool. Rightio, we're done and dusted. Another day. We're into another week. Again, my apologies for not doing Friday's show. Um, yeah, I just just completely run out of time and run out of juice. And with the premiere, I wanted to be sitting there, so I had to do dinner. And, uh, so, yeah, anyway, enough about me. I'll see you all again tomorrow. Have a great Monday evening. Hope you didn't work. Work wasn't too much crap today. Radio, catch you soon. Whether you're going that way, that way, I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.